Hello, beautiful kindergartners, and welcome to Tuesday, another fun day of math with Miss Allen. I am so excited to have you back here today. The first thing I want us to practice is I want us to use our big, strong brains to think of a few ways that we can sort these shapes. Sorting means that you put these things into different groups based on what things they have in common or the same. So if I take a peek at all these shapes, I notice that some of them are orange and some of them are purple. If you look right up here, it looks like they're already sorted. So all of our orange shapes are on the top and all of our purple shapes are on the bottom. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. So next, I'm going to notice that some of these shapes are bigger and some of these shapes are smaller. So I'm going to take my pencil, not my pencil, my finger, and I'm going to sort these shapes. I'm going to do the big shapes on the left and the small shapes on the right. So I'm gonna look over here. This looks like a big shape to me. I'm gonna put it on the left. This one matches that size shape. Let's see here. These are smaller rectangles, so I'm gonna put them on the right. I'm gonna keep going. This is a bigger triangle, so it goes on the left, and this one matches. I'm gonna put the smaller triangles on the right. Here's another big one. Oh, these ones are pretty big too. This one's small, this one's big. Small, small, small. Perfect, so notice now I have the bigger shapes on the left and the smaller shapes on the right. Next, I notice, so we've already done color, we did size. Oh, we could do shape too, because there's lots of different shapes that we could sort by. Hmm, all right, let's see here. The first shape I'm gonna sort for is the triangle that looks like this. All of the sides are the same length, so I'm gonna look around and see where the rest of those triangles are. Here's one. Even though these are two different size triangles, they still look like the same triangle to me. So I'm gonna move this one there too. Let's see, this one as well. Oh, I still see a couple more triangles. Take a peek at this one. Remember, a triangle has three sides and three points or corners. One, two, three sides, one, two, three corners. That's a triangle. And this one's a triangle. Here's a triangle and here's a triangle. There we go. So now we have a group of all of our triangles. Next, let's do our hexagons. Here's two hexagons. There's another one. Do you see another hexagon? Where is it? Oh, I found it right there. Perfect. So we have a group of our triangles, a group of our hexagons. And last but not least, I see a whole bunch of rectangles down here at the bottom. Perfect. So then we sorted based on rectangles, hexagons, and triangles. So depending on what type of shape they are. We could even take this a step further, friends, and do it based on what type of triangle. So we could move these triangles down here. And then we have two, we have this type of triangle. We have this type of triangle. We have hexagons. And then we have rectangles down here. There's lots of different ways that we could sort these shapes by their color, by their size, by the shape, by how the shape looks. You can sort lots of different things based on lots of different characteristics or things that they have in common. So next friends, we're gonna take a peek at all of these squirmy little bugs and we are going to be sorting them based on what they have in common. That means the same or what's different about them. So I think the first way I wanna sort all of these beautiful bugs is on whether or not they have wings. So I'm gonna look at all these bugs. If they have wings, I'm gonna put it on the left. If it does not have wings, I'm putting it on the right. All right, so let's start down here at the bottom. What about this furry little caterpillar? He does not have wings, he's going on the right. What about a spider? Nope, he goes on the right as well. This one has wings, an ant does not have wings. Nope, no wings over here either. I wanna be sure I don't throw them away. Oh, this butterfly does here. We'll make some space. Does this one have wings or no? Yeah, my favorite color wings. Miss Brownigan's favorite color wings. What about this spider? Nope. And these bumblebees also have wings. Perfect. So we sorted all of these bugs based on whether or not they had wings. On the left, we have the animals that do have wings. And on the right, we have those that do not have any wings. All right. So next, we can look at these animals. Hmm, let me think of another way that we could sort them. We could sort them based on what type 
of animal they are, couldn't we? So I think, let's see here, I have butterflies up here. I have quite a few, so I'm going to keep those here. This looks like a dragonfly, so I'm going to put it down here. And I'm going to match it with this dragonfly. These two are bumblebees, so I'll put them here. Here's two more butterflies that I'll put with the butterflies. See what I'm doing? I'm sorting them based on the type of bug they are. So up here I have butterflies. Oops. Over here I have bumblebees. Down here I have dragonflies. All right, let's keep working on the rest of these animals. I have a spider here. Here's another spider and another spider. Here's a caterpillar, another caterpillar, and last but not least, we have all these ants. Crazy! So the groups that we did are butterflies, bees, dragonflies, we did spiders, we did ants, and we did caterpillars. So lots of these animals have a lot of similarities. Those are things that they have that are the same, but they also have a lot of differences, which means that those are the things they have that are different from each other. Pretty interesting. We're going to be working more on this tomorrow, but for today, we're going to keep working on our numbers, our addition, and our subtraction. So when you're ready, I want you to take out your math workbook and find page 185. Don't forget, you'll need an erasable pencil. Once you have your workbook page, I want you to take your time to write your first and last name. Remember, practice makes perfect, so you need to be writing both your first name and your last name as nicely as you can. Once you have your first and last name, we're going to start in section number one. It says draw circles for one to ten and show the five group. So I'm going to start by drawing my circles to show those five groups. Let's see here. One. Easy peasy. One, two. One, two, three. We don't have a five group yet, so just keep working. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. There's our first five group. Make sure all five of those circles are really close together so we can tell it's a five group. Next, let's do six. One, two, three, four, five. That's our five group. Make sure they stay together and do a little space to add one more. Five, six. Notice how I kept my five group nice and tight together. Let's move on to do seven. One, two, three, four, five. Do a nice big space because that is our five group. Six, seven. Let's try eight together. One, two, three, four, five. Do a big space. Six, seven, eight. Looks like they already did nine together. Notice how they had their five group. They left a big space right here and then they added on four more. Cool stuff. Let's go ahead and move on to do number 10. One, two, three, four, five. There's our five group. Leave a big space. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And there's another five group. Perfect. Once you're done with section number one, go ahead and keep your erasable pencil and we'll work on section number two together. It says write each number and an equal to sign, which looks like this or a not equal to sign, which is an equal sign with a cross across it. So we're seeing if this group is equal to or not equal to this group. So let's see, this first example, they said two does not equal four. And they're right because they're not the same number at all. One, two, one, two, three, four. Cool. Let's try this next one, this blue one right here. One, two, three, four. I see four dots on this side. One, two, three, four. And I see four dots on this side. Now, in the middle of these two numbers, we're going to write whether they are equal to or whether they are not equal to. Is four equal to four? Are they the same? They definitely are. Four equals four. Let's try this next one in the orange. Ready? One, two, three, four, five. Next, one, two, three. Hmm, does five equal three? Are five and three the same? No, you're gonna write a not equal to sign. Make sure you add that cross, that cross, that cross your equal sign. Five does not equal three. Next one. One, two, three, four, five, again. 
One, two, three, four, five. Ooh, another five. Does five equal five? Are they the same? They sure are. I'm gonna draw an equal sign right in the middle. Let's move on to the blue one. One, two, three, four. Next group, one, two, three. Is four equal to three or not equal to three? Remember, equal means that they're the same. No, four is not the same as three. I'm gonna make a not equal to sign. Last one, one, two, three. One, two, three. Does three equal three? Sure does, they're the exact same number. So I'm gonna draw an equal sign right in the middle. Good work. Next, we're moving on to section number three. We've done something very similar to this. So get ready to choose that big, strong brain. It says add the numbers. Notice every single one of these problems has a plus sign in the middle. That means we're adding them together, which means we're counting on, we're adding fingers, we're adding circles, or we're adding objects. I'll just do one of these together with you. Zero plus four. I know if I have zero hand, fingers on one hand and I add four more, I only have four fingers all together. Awesome. Let's try one more together just to be sure we know what we're doing. Two plus two. I'm gonna hold up two fingers. I'm gonna add two more. I'm gonna count how many I have together. One, two, three, four. I have four all together. Perfect. Remember for this first section, section number three, you are doing addition because each one of these has a plus sign. Go ahead and do all of those addition problems yourself, but be 100% certain that you stop when you get to this black line because this bottom section, we are not doing addition. So go ahead, do addition for the first half of the back and then come back to this video and I'll give you your next instructions for section number four. Alrighty, now that you're all done adding on the top part of your workbook page, on the bottom, you are subtracting. That means we're taking away. Notice in between each one of these problems, there's a minus sign. That means we are taking away. Be 100% certain that you are not adding on this section. These are not plus signs, these are minus signs, which means we're taking away. So if I start with zero and I take away zero, I still have zero, silly. But if I have five and I take away two, I'm gonna hold up five fingers, then I'm gonna put two of them down. How many do I have left? Three fingers are left. Let's try another one. Remember, I see the subtraction sign in the middle, which means we're taking away. If I start with four fingers up and I take away four, I'm gonna put four down. I'm holding up zero fingers now. Good job. Let's try this one together. Last one we're doing together. I'm gonna start with four fingers. I'm going to take away three fingers, which I'm gonna put three down. I have one that's still up in the air. For this bottom section, all of these problems, you're doing subtraction. Remember, subtraction has the minus sign. That means you're taking away. When you are done with your math workbook page, take a picture to send to your teacher so we can make sure that you did everything the right way Keep growing that brain. You're doing amazing. Take your time. Remember, on the top half, you're doing addition. On the bottom half, you're doing subtraction.